I wish I had something better to say about the idol. So here we go again, friends. I am the man you may know as Ian. I am from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and we're talking again about The Idol because I'm in it to win it. I'm watching the whole series through. I'm going to do it. We're doing it together. And this episode, huh. I mean, there's not a lot going on. There is at least one scene that I did enjoy that I felt like there was something to it. Uh, I think the show is kind of backwards in the way that I'm looking at it. Because, as you may or may not know, I am a big follower of the Nixium sex cult thing where you had um, the girl from Smallville and some other like pseudo-famous celebrities get sucked into this weird sex cult thing. And it was all about like self-improvement and self-development. And I get where they're coming from i just don't think the acting carries this and the writing doesn't carry it because they don't seem to understand how it works you here you have keith ranieri from nexium the cult leader who was this tiny man just like the weekend who has all this virtuosity and how he speaks and how he manipulates people by them you know mentally into doing what he wants this show goes about it backwards it's like the weekend comes in and plows joss and just because he's so good at sexing her up that she's just going to instantly listen to everything that he says instead of the mental manipulation that we do finally see in this episode. Let's take a look at a breakdown and review. That way I can remember exactly what happened in this show. Let's look at it together. Spoilers, as always, as we talk about it. Again, why does Joss end up naked? In, like, in the literal first scene, she's naked. Like, and for no particular reason. I just don't understand it. They're like, sometimes she sleeps naked, sometimes she doesn't. But they always have to show you if she sleeps naked. It's very strange. Um, this one is called Daybreak for no particular reason other than, I guess she wrote... There's also a logic problem that I have. She wrote a song called Daybreak. She wrote it on her second album, which was... A year and a half prior even though she's been in the music industry for 10 years so she didn't release her second album until like eight and a half years into her career that doesn't make a ton of sense either way let's keep looking at it because you've got skis bag tedros he's now pushed his way into her life and it ends in <laughs> like the creepiest way possible but he's just pushed his way into her life. He now lives there in her house that her mother bought and is just full in. He's bringing in everybody he knows. His whole little cult group is there living there now. And he claims he's bringing in a super producer who worked with Kanye, which apparently I we've yet to see the guy. So I'm going to say we don't know what's going on there. We have no idea how <clears throat> Joss feels about any of this because they don't give you any time about with her with her thoughts or by herself or talking to anyone that could give us any indication of how she feels about it she's just like sometimes she feels like she has her own uh she has some sort of control over the situation and then other times she's a complete pawn it's very just very strange but they decide to go out shopping okay which doesn't, I don't even know why he's doing this. It, it's just strange. And as this review says, Tedros should be terif and terrifying. At no point do I feel intimidated or scared of the weekend. In fact, when they go shopping, there's a shopping assistant there and he's recommending outfits for Joss. And they're just not. He uh, Tedros is, is like, oh, you're looking at my girl. You better stop it or I'm a curb stomp you. I'm not scared of him at all. I'm more scared of Joss's like team. Her manager and and Destiny, Chaim and, and Destiny are scarier than anything that the weekend is doing. It, it's just strange. He also immediately fires her like personal chef because he she touches her abs. It's very stupid. It's a dumb scene. Don't does doesn't even make any sense. It, they don't even explain why he's able to exert the control over her until 
the end of the episode where you have a very long scene about the emotional trauma that she suffered. Okay. So he's very controlling of her and it, like they just didn't give enough setup to this. And there's no he's just he's just not good enough of an actor to to do it. Like and I, I assume based on his comments that everything he says was planned out and it's to make him look weak and pathetic and whatever. But it, they just they got the character all wrong. Like, it's just, he's not there. The insecurities just don't come through. It's either his lack of acting or his lack of, like, understanding the character. There's a part where he mispronounces carte blanche. He says, Cardi Blanche. Like, is that supposed to make him look stupid? It's just, none of it makes sense. So anyway, her best friend calls Chaim and Destiny, who are our partners, and they manage Joss together. And it's like mother and father. Hyam's the father, Destiny's the mother, and they, they seem to be able to, you know, control her on some level. They keep her moving forward with her career. Uh, you also get to see, and, and this is a good point where I much like other episodes, it's about everyone but Jocelyn. Like there's not the you don't really know anything about her until the very end. Um, they show Jenny Kim who's the girl from Blackpink, Diane. They don't They don't really know what, they don't really explain anything to you, but they seem to be showing you that she's taking Joss's place somehow. She's performing and putting out songs and doing music videos or whatever. It's the same exact dance crew doing the same exact, I don't understand. There's no context, doesn't make any sense. I do really enjoy... Um, Hank Azaria is Chaim and Daveen Joy Randolph is Destiny. They're both great. They have little tiny moments, but I think they're both great. And they both meet with Tedros and they're like, you guys have two weeks to figure this out. And they're basically trying to scare him into being like, dude, you're an amateur. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to handle this situation. But when they get privately together, they're like, oh, she's in trouble. She's mixed up with the wrong guy. Now, they just think it's the wrong guy, not some crazy cult, because he's surrounded himself with all these like failed musicians who are very talented but failed that I guess they're going to use them to prop her up. Like, I don't understand any of his motives. Like, what is his motive? Is his motive to take Joss down so he can replace her with Diane? Is his motive to, like, rebuild her and leech off of her fame? Like... They don't give you any explanation of anything, so I don't really think it makes any sense. All they keep having is icky sex, and it's gross every single time it happens. There's a disgusting scene, which I'm sure is supposed to make Tedros look like weak, where she's like, you can't finish in me, you have to finish on your own. Like, it's stupid. I just don't, I don't get it. And it doesn't really work. The only time it seems to work is at the end when he start. They start talking about the, uh, the this emotional abuse that she suffered, but then they twist it into the worst part of it. So they, they, at first they're like, "Oh, nothing really matters." Like you know, her feeling, like your friend's feelings right now, don't matter because. Feelings are temporary, and the abuse, like anything that's bad that happened to you, you can you can focus into like uh, like a sharp point and and make some cre something creatively beautiful. And I thought they had a really good point when they talked about um, there's a Led Zeppelin song, "All of My Love," and I thought that was a really good story where they talk about you know it's when Robert Plant lost his five year old son to a stomach virus and he wrote this song it's, it's not a love song it's a tribute to his son and how the world has been given this beautiful song because of something just so tragic and you have to harness that and then they get into this whole creepy thing about how joss's mom used to beat her with a hairbrush and he's and you know you could see the wheels spinning in in the weekend's head where he's like Oh, if I can just beat the the motivation. She lacks motivation. Her mom used to motivate her by beating her with a brush. If I beat her with a brush, it's going to be great. And at the end, she's like, thank you, Daddy, for taking care of me. It's like, come on. This is so, so 
it just seems amateurishly done when you could just watch what happened in the Nixium, all of the different Nixium, um, d- you know, documentaries, and see how like a weak, insecure man can manipulate women into doing sexual things for them. And it wasn't the sex that made them coming back to him. And that's where The weekend seems to have it wrong, where he thinks that the sex is what brings these, you know, he's so good at sex that, that, that they come back to him. And that's not what it is. It's the um, emotional manipulation. So not that funny of an episode unless you really like watching <laughs> Joss get beaten with a brush. She's crying and she's like, I love it, daddy. Give me more. I don't really like this is just uh, it was the most interesting episode in the fact that it was the least campy episode. But at the same time, it was campy in the sense that like they're trying so hard to make the weekend seem like his Tedros character to seem like so weak and like insecure that it, it it's just it doesn't work. It, it's not working. It's and this wasn't as over the top as I was hoping it would be. It was still disgusting and creepy and cringy. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Are you still on board? What is even going on in the show? Is it going to get renewed for the second season? They keep claiming the numbers are going up and up. They're saying that the premiere episode had 3.5 million views. We hear it's going down. Everyone else says it, it's, it's terrible. Everyone seems to hate it. There's a lot of hate watching going on, though. The this these people, Kate Sanchez here, she gives it a four out of ten. Do every single episode so far has been a one out of ten, except for when it's a ten out of ten for nudity and cringe. So, anyway, thank you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you stuck around. We really do appreciate it. We do have a full length audio podcast that you can catch for free. That is on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, O R K underscore you on Instagram, or Q on Rumble. Come join our live stream, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Times, Friday nights. It's a party. We do a lot of giveaways there, so come check those out as well. You can get some, some free DVD codes and things like that. So from all of us here, our reviews will kill you. To all of y'all at home, get cringy, finish yourselves off, come back for the next one, but I am on to the next one.